Hey guys, I'm here with a new Swing Studio at Cooper's Golf Club and we're going to talk about another um, technical point of the golf swing and that's the fundamentals of golf. So um, I don't sort of, I'm going to try and uh, sort of insinuate how important the fundamentals of golf are to master in order for you to achieve great success through your swing. So number one tip of the day before I go out and delve into all that detail is if you play golf on the coast in Scotland, always wear sun cream. Because I've been uh, hit by the, the sun, or the best part of the sun the last couple of days. It feels like I've been in a sunbed for the last week. But anyway, back to that. So, if I, I'm going to talk about, um, I read a lot into Ben Hogan's stuff, and Ben Hogan um, basically couldn't recommend the fundamentals of golf anymore, how important they are to master in order to build the foundations for you to achieve a good golf swing. So, I'm going to talk about grip, down swing, uh, dip grip backswing and downswing, so what I'm going to talk, talk about is basically, uh, this is a, a synopsis into creating great excess throughout your golf swing. So I'm going to talk about first of all the grip, so I get a lot of lessons and a lot of good players coming to me asking that they're hitting a poor ball flight. Because they're hitting a poor ball flight through the, the in-swing principles, they don't actually have good pre-swing principles, so they're actually setting up to the ball I had a guy last week who was hooking the ball. He had quite a flat swing plane. He was quite a tall guy, so he was, he was that was his characteristics of his body basically. So he was standing quite tall, he was quite flat, and then he was hitting everything left because the club face was slightly closed to that path. But anyway, we need to set up in, in order to create efficiency. That's the best thing I would like to call it. So what I mean by that is setting up correctly will help you build a profile of yourself in order for to achieve great great results in the long run. So first of all I'm going to talk about grip. So grip is probably one of the most important things, or that is the most important thing that I teach. It's the only communication we have with the club. So the grip, so what I'm going to do is make sure it goes, I've probably done this before, but left hand on first, so make sure the grip goes through diagonal from the forefinger to pinky. Make sure it goes diagonal on two. Pressure points on the left hand are the last three fingers, so if I take the the last three fingers off, I should be able to balance it with my forefinger and thumb. So what I want to do is make sure, what I do is take the forefinger off when I put the, the grip through the, the fingers, but then I position the left finger around that, but I'm, I don't make sure that the left finger and the middle finger are touching. So from here, I want to close my left hand, but I want to make sure that this part, see the fleshy part of the pad of the glove? I, I don't want to make sure that's in contact with the with the, the grip end of the club, so I close the hand. So as you can see from here, I make a V between forefinger, so if this is better down the angle, it's not a great angle. So forefinger and thumb, I create a V to my my chin, or my right eye, as if you want to call it. So down that way, the thumb should go down the right hand side of the grip. So when I position the right hand on the grip, that should almost, so let's see the lifeline of the right hand, so the lifeline of the right hand is almost the joint between the palm and the, the start of the fingers. So from here, put the, the left hand on. The, that the club should go through the lifeline, and then the thumb should almost go through the lifeline as well. So almost like that. So we create a V with our right hand as well. That should point almost to the, the right eye. So from here, what I want you to do is close your right hand. But from here, John Daly, all good players do this. So they almost have their trigger finger. So we don't want our right right forefinger and middle forefinger or left uh, middle finger in contact with our first finger because that creates a lot of consistent inconsistent strikes and it can be misconstrued at times having two fingers close together because it doesn't give your hands enough freedom to move so what I do is come to the grip and make sure that that's this finger is maybe one or two fingers away from the, the middle finger. John Daly does it too, but I would recommend one. What that will do is it will feel like that. It will give you a good choice of feedback when you're hitting the strike. Give you that immediate um, feedback of strike and how it feels and how you can release the pull properly. So that's one thing with power to grip. So what, what we need to try and focus on now is weight distribution and posture. So you want our weight kind of predominantly be 50-50 when we're hitting sort of it. I've got a wedge here. We want to make it kind of even. And I won't delve into too much detail about that. So weight distribution and grip. 
cover that and ball position kind of in the middle of stance. So ball position, let's go ball position. So a good thing I always use about ball position is my sternum, so my zip on my jacket or my mid layer, whatever you want to call it. And I always feel like I've used that as a, a guide. So where I position the ball is where I want the club to bottom out and hit, make contact with the, the ball. So where I put the ball and I want to strike the grass before that to make sure that I'm making contact where the ball is situated. So that will give you, that will let you know how, how gravity works in order to hit down on the ball or and get the ball up in the air. So the more force we apply down the way, the higher the ball foot's going to go. Another thing I'm going to talk about is backswing. So when this can be quite misconstrued sometimes, backswing. So a lot of golfers try and swing too far back or swing the club too fast on the way back. But what I try and teach a lot is the shorter the backswing, the more efficiency and the more energy you want to create an impact because it's more compact and more controlled. Um, what a lot of players do is when they take, or what I'm trying to recommend is when you take the club back, so on the back swing, my whole left side should move in the way. My left shoulder should go over my right, my right, my right leg. So from here, I should have quite an extended back swing or extended takeaway. So from here, I should have about a foot of wrist hint, wrist action. So if I move correctly, I've got that wrist cock, and as I come back down, I can create that strike that I want. So so let your left side move in. Elbows should be quite close together. Um, I should be able to, when I take the club back on my the back sling, almost feel like that my, my left shoulder is underneath my chin. So if, that's a good reference point to use. So if my left shoulder, if my left shoulder is, or my, I can't make contact with the left shoulder, I'm too high swing plane. And if I'm too flat, so if my left shoulder is underneath my chin, I'm too flat. So focus on that technique. So if I take the club back and my left side should move in the way. Don't be scared to do that. Don't be scared to move away from the golf ball. As long as the weight doesn't go outside your right foot, then the swing up won't move at all. So left shoulder over the golf ball, come back down, and I should feel like my elbows are tucked in. And I come back down, let it, let it free. So we're talking about the downswing now. So downswing is an important factor. So let's talk about downswing. So a lot of people, um, that struggle with distance, they swing too fast from the top of backswing. So a good thing that I learned over the last sort of six months, eight months is when you take a club back and then so the first half of your the first half of your transition from backswing to downswing is all about gravity. So a lot of golfers I see try and release the club early, they come back down, they lose all that energy and they don't hit the ball, they cast quite early, they early release. So a good thing I've learned is when you so the first half of your downswing from right shoulder to hip Gravity does the work, so there's no power source from the right shoulder to the hip. So what I mean by that is we can't apply any pressure. So if we apply any pressure, all that energy will be lost round about just before we actually reach our right foot. So the first half, the journey, the first half of the journey down swing is dealt with by gravity. So gravity is pushing the club down, and then from here, as our hands get to waist height, then that's where the power comes into equation. So a lot of guys that have a short backswing, they create so much energy because they can release that lag and restore it into the last minute and then release that lag late as, as, as late as possible in the downswing. So a lot of guys I see get to the top of the backswing and then they release the club early, but they've lost all that lag and then they can't create any energy. So the first half of the, the downswing is dealt with by gravity. So um, don't rush it from the top, always let gravity pull the club down and I almost feel like that as soon as your hands get to waist height, that's where they take over. So if I come from here, the hands aren't doing anything now, the club's just pulled down by gravity, I come back down and then, then as the hands get to waist height, they should be, they should take the lead role, they should transmit that energy into impact. So come back down, then my hands are at waist height, then my left hand slows down slightly, the right hand takes over, then my left hand slows down, and I should end up in that position where my right hand and left hand are in line with my left shoulder. So I'll re sort of refine that slightly. So grip we've worked on, two knuckles on the left hand, the D on the left hand, close left hand, make sure it's to the fingers, right hand on top, trigger finger, make sure there's about two or three, or one or two finger widths apart from your forefinger and then your middle finger, and then you come back down. So where we position the ball, we want to make contact with there. 
get into a habit of doing that. And as we move, take the back and back swing, make sure our left side moves towards our right foot, and then come back down. Then we let gravity do its work, so we let the physics of the, the swing do its work, so anything that goes up has to come down. So the club's on its journey early on, so if we, if you think if you were running down a hill, and the highest point of the hill, that's where you would, that's where you're just getting started. So let's think of the golf swing that way. So you're not as going to be as quick as top of the hill as we are sort of midway down it. So I feel like the, you're just a slow jog, slow jog, slow jog. Then there's a full sprint. So your hands are coming through at the highest velocity that can be reduced. So let the club drop, hands come through, club takes over, then you come through. Then as I come through, my hands are lying on the left foot. And give that a shot. So there's no power source from top of that swing and waist height. So if you've got any thoughts on it, let me know, comment, and subscribe to the channel.